Hey guys, today's tutorial is on how to use custom basis sets and add an electron core potential into your Gaussian input. Um, what is electron core potential? So if we have um, a big metal complex, for example, I have platinum here and platinum has 78 electrons, which starts to be a lot. and uh, my laptop uh, was struggling for 10 hours to compute uh, the um, to optimize the structure when I used even a small basis set like 3-21G. So um, I thought, hey, maybe I could simplify that by using electron core potential. This um, approximation averages out the electrons um, of the uh, certain atoms that you specify um, and it averages them out into like this cloud. Uh, so different electron core potentials will average different amounts, basically different uh, numbers of electrons. Some of them average all of them into a huge blob and some of them only do that for core electrons and the outer shell electrons are actually treated as separate ones. Um, so depending on the ECP that you use, you will get different results. Uh, where do we get uh, those coefficients? Now, if you go into the Gaussian uh, website and look at their basis sets, they have a whole list of them and some of them are already listed here. So here we have LAN L2DZ ECP uh, and they have descriptions and references and you can look at all of this in detail. So some of the ECPs are already there, some of them are not. Same thing for basis sets for um, that are not electron core potential, some of them are here, some of them are not. There's this um, EMSL basis set exchange website that is uh, an, an orm enormous compilation of basis sets put all together in different formats. It's very, very useful. It's run by uh, Dr. David Beller. Uh, it's a great website uh, if you ever need a specific basis set. We'll get back to this in a moment. So um, let's say I want to add electron core potential to the input of this uh, complex. Uh, as usual, I go into extensions, Gaussian, I will generate my input file and I will add modifications to it in Notepad. So here again, um, I have, as usual, the top lines are the keywords that uh, indicate to Gaussian, what are we doing? And as usual, the first thing you put is the um, the method. So here I have this functional, a DFT, and uh, after the the slash here, I instead of the basis set, I actually put those keywords, gen space pseudo equal read. This indicates to Gaussian that we are not using one basis set; we're using a set of different ones. So. Now we have to tell Gaussian, well, which ones are we actually going to be using? After your um, charge and multiplicity and the description of the coordinates, you need to add a blank line. And then after this blank line, we can actually add the um, basis sets used. So here I list the atoms that will correspond to one basis set. So here I have nitrogen, hydrogen, and chlorine that will all be regarded um, as using this 6-31GD basis set. Now for platinum, I don't want to use this. I want to use this LAN L2DZ electron core potential. So I add four stars. And on the next line, I write uh, PT and the name of the basis set, and again, four, uh, four stars and a blank line in the end of the input. So pretty easy if uh, the basis sets that you want to use for your atoms are defined in the um, 
the list of the basis sets here. It's very simple input, uh, very straightforward. Uh, so if you want to read more on the gen uh, keyword, it, it's also a keyword uh, in the manual here. Now, what happens if the basis set that you want to use or the Elgin core potential that you want to use is actually not listed here, aka Gaussian does not know the coefficients for this basis set. If you have a situation like that, you can still manage to run your calculation. It's just going to be a little bit more complicated for the input. The second example here that I have uh, uses three different basis sets. I have one for platinum, one for nitrogen and hydrogen, and another one for chlorine. Let's start with chlorine. Um, where did I get these coefficients? Once again, I go into this um, basis exchange uh, website. I click on chlorine. I already uh, chose Gaussian 94 and I pick a basis set that I need. For example, it's going to be 3-21G. I get the basis set and I will copy these coefficients into my input. Okay, so if it's the first um, basis set coefficient, like uh, the first set of, of coefficients that you're adding, you don't need the four stars at the front, you just add a blank line. And between all the other ones, you need to add um, the stars. Okay, so I copy those coefficients here and I add four stars. Then for nitrogen and hydrogen, I will be using a known basis set, so I can just name it, very simple. Now for platinum, I want to use a specific basis set that, for example, is not listed. For this, I will go back to the basis set exchange website, choose the um, ECP that I want to use, and I will get basis set. So for this, uh, oh wait, I click on the wrong one, no. This one, perfect. It, the other one was not illustrating my point, so sorry about that. <laughs> so um, for this um, electron core potential, I have two sets of coefficients. The first set of coefficients on the top describes the electrons that will be on the outer shell. So these ones will be actually computed as separate electrons. And the bottom list of coefficients are for the... Um, electrons that will be averaged out into an electron cloud. So that will be for the core electrons. Okay, and I need to add both of them, both of the lists into my input. The top list here will go into the list of basis sets here. So after the four stars, I will add this list here. Okay, that was the first set of coefficients. Then I will add four stars, skip a line, and now go back here and add the second set of coefficients in the end of the input because this corresponds to the electron core potential. Okay. After the last um, number, basically, you need once again a blank line so that Gaussian knows that it's the end of the input. So. Um, it's a bit more complicated, uh, but technically, if you don't forget your blank lines and you don't forget your four stars, it should all run without problem. Here also, you need the same um, keywords replacing the basis set as we had in the previous example right here. Um, so that's the end of it. Um, it speeds up the calculation by a lot if you um, know what are the limits of your basis sets? And you can add all different ones to the different atoms that you have. Uh, bigger basis sets for the atoms that play a more important role, smaller ones for the atoms that are less important and adjust your calculation speed as you need. Uh, so I hope that was helpful and that's the end of this tutorial.